Hey everybody, we are in Fort Kent, Maine. How do you know it's Fort Kent? Because they have a fort, a high tower. Hmm, interesting. This is a old sort of a observation fort kind of a thing, watchtower, so to speak. I'll take you for a little tour of the inside. And uh, just a reminder of the Lord being a high tower compared to a high tower in a fortress. Very interesting. Let's go in here. There's a TV thing playing in there, so you'll hear that. Now that's a door there. Look how thick that thing is. Pretty incredible. The American military built Fort Kent Blockhouse in 1839. This military station was a house built with large wooden beams and was equipped for men to defend their Different things out there. The dispute got bitter with incidents that almost sent the two disputing parties into an all-out war. Luckily, the conflict was resolved before any injuries with the signing of the Webster Ashburnham Treaty, August 9, 1842. The treaty resolved that the boundary now we'll head up. between Maine and Britain and was signed by the United States Secretary of State, Daniel Webster. The United Kingdom Privy Councilor Alexander Baron, first Baron Ashford. The treaty ended the longest year that is steep. the military eventually abandoned the Fort Kent Blockhouse in 1845. Very steep. So, up here, would be where you would, I guess, be able to get some pretty good shots at people if you're being attacked. Can't imagine putting these beams up here. How big some of these beams are. Pretty incredible. With my hand up there on the beam. Pretty hefty. Uh, not using cranes or other types of modern stuff. Pretty interesting. There's the view out the window. Out that way. Have some old stuff here about the Aroostook War. There. Old cross cut saw on this wall. Some old oars from some of the old logging boats and things. Pretty interesting. It's kind of weird up here. Here again you have an uh, old hewing axe right there, broad axe. You'd use to make the beams like these. Another crosscut saw. A big oar. And some little miscellaneous antique types of things. Some old yokes here. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Kind of an interesting thing there, too. An old calibers here for scaling a log. This tells you how much board feet you can get into a log right here. All these different numbers on there. A big T-handle auger. For I don't know if that'd be through wood. It looks more like something you drill ice with. That's pretty big for wood. You really wouldn't need anything that big unless you're doing a huge mortise and tenon. But uh, there's an old scythe here and um, some kind of old logging skid tongs probably and adds down there. So an old, what's left of an old black powder musket up there. An old cant hook right here. Some cannonballs down there. Now we have to head back down with one hand. I'll be doing this nice and slow because those are some steep steps going down there. If you can see that. So let's head down. Hopefully I won't fall. All right, and we're out. 
<sighs> so we'll just kind of walk around the building a little bit. Pretty amazing how thick these logs are. Just incredible to think of guys lifting these things up. Yeah, you know, it's it's been restored and things, so they might have done some, you know, work with actual machinery and whatnot. But uh, just sort of a half lap here on the corners where you cut this log, you cut it kind of in half like this, and then the other one laps over top of it. Uh, works okay. Be better if they were dovetailed; they wouldn't pull apart as much. But um, you know, it's probably not the original structure anymore but uh, just pretty interesting there thought you might like to see that we were up here many years ago when Oliver was just really little and I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing to see it been wanting to come up here and make a trip up to see this thing again so thought I'd bring all of you along for the ride but you know it just gives us a reminder of what the scriptures say about how that uh, God is our fortress. God is our high tower. Uh, this is where you go when things get bad. A video I showed just yesterday about the police raid and whatever else, and they, they come into the guy's house and they're shooting and all this other stuff. Well, that's coming into a house. This is a high tower. This would be a lot harder for a SWAT team to raid or anybody else, any other bad guys or whatever. A lot more difficult, a lot more challenging to try to work that out, if you know what I'm saying. Just amazing. Okay, you can see up there there's some dovetail joinery on the corners. It's angled a little bit more so it doesn't pull apart as much. So, I don't know if it's that's original and the half laps down below aren't, or I'm not sure. But a, definitely an interesting structure. A lot of places to shoot out of there and, you know... Um, could modern weapons, you know, bullets go through the walls? I don't know. Well, that's a lot of wood you'd have to get through. Probably at least 10 or 12 inches, I'd say. So questionable whether you get through that, even with high-powered rifles, I don't know. But certainly with black powder, back when this would have been originally built and used, black powder muskets aren't going to be getting through those walls. You would have been quite safe in that high tower. And, um... Yeah, I just want to make a, a comment too. A lot of people kind of misunderstood what I was saying with the whole thing of the police and I was saying about that there's good law enforcement, good police officers. I realize in the cities that it's very corrupt right now. I've seen plenty of uh, documentation about that where the officers are extremely corrupt and um, really bad guys. Um, but you know, I got to thinking about that while we were driving today up here. We're about two hours north of where north of Patton right now. And um, this is, we're at the very top of the crown of Maine, way up at the top here, Fort Kent. You can look it up on a map. But um, this issue of safety and of the police and everything else, and I got to thinking, you know, who's really at fault for the police going bad? Is it the government? Is it law enforcement? Uh, you know, the politicians, the lawyers, the doctors, the whatever. No, actually, it's the churches. Um, the Bible says that if judgment come, it must begin at the house of God. Uh, Christians are the result or the reason for corruption in the police department. And that's the truth. Uh, the law enforcement officers used to understand that they were ministers of God. And some of you that wrote in the comments saying that you know, I was a police officer, former police officer, you know, you, you are right now, and, and how that you saw the corruption and getting worse and worse. Um, the reason for that is because the churches don't have any power. Professing Christianity doesn't have any power anymore. Um, we no longer think of God like that. God is our high tower. He's our defense. We can run to Him for safety. Therefore, we won't fear man. You see, if you fear man then you don't fear God. If you fear God, you say, God will protect me, then you don't fear what man can do to you. And you'll take strong stands. They'll come along and they'll tell you that you need to have things put in your shoulder or things on your face and distance yourself six feet apart and whatever, and you say, no, God will take care of me. Uh, I don't have to be uh, get into oppositions of science falsely so-called. And uh, because the churches forsook that, 
now the, the country's falling apart. A country's condition is directly proportional to the church's um, faith, to the church's corruption. The church gets corrupt, the country gets corrupt. That's just the way it is. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So, I just thought this would be a good place to talk about this subject here by the tower. Um, I am in no way defending the actions of every law enforcement officer or police officer in this country. Absolutely not. I know better. But what I'm saying is it's up to the church to raise the standards. And, well, bro Brother Brian, you know, the, the catching up of the body of Christ is coming soon, so we don't have to worry about it. Let's just let things fall apart. Uh, where does the Bible say we're supposed to do that? Where does it say in the New Testament that because the catching up of the body of Christ, the resurrection is coming, you just kick back, throw it in neutral, and just coast? Where does it say that? I don't see it anywhere. Uh, what I do see is that we are to hinder. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Until the body of Christ is gone, we're supposed to hold standards to be high. We are supposed to run to God as our high tower and not worry about what the laws are passed or whatever. No, God can protect us. And um, raise your standards, brethren. Don't forget, our high tower is a lot better than this old thing. This old thing, you could breach it, you could do things and whatever, uh, but that's not like God. God can truly protect us. So, I thought I'd do a challenge here quickly by this old watchtower here, this old guard tower, whatever you want to call it. Very neat to look at, but it pales in comparison to our God. That will be it. Thank you for watching. All right, now we are in Stockholm. Not Sweden, but Maine. I'm going to see if I can, how high up I can get on this tower here, this old tower. I'm not really a big fan of heights, but we'll see how high up I can go. As we continue our theme of high towers, or God being our tower, our high tower. Might be the last video you ever see of me. <laughs> Let's hope not. Out there's a lake you can see way out in the distance. See if I can turn this thing around. See way out there in the distance. Okay. Now let's continue up the high tower here. Let's continue up. Again, the Lord would be a much better tower than this one. Again, we can see way over here in the distance, a bunch of farms and things over there. And starting to lose my nerve here. I don't think I want to go the whole way to the top. So I'm going to hold it right here. Um, I'm not a fan of real big height, heights or whatever else. So I think that'll work for me. Going back down the tower. It's weird too because you can just see right down to the ground. So uh, I know some of you are probably cheering, come on brother, go the whole way to the top. No, I don't need to. I learned a long time ago that daredevil stuff, where you're trying to impress people, usually doesn't work out too good. So a little bit of a breezy day too, so that, that doesn't help either. <laughs> but um, yeah. Pretty interesting. All right, looks like some people are coming. So that should do it for now.